minutes, but before we do that, can I do an AV check? So uh, find the questions tool in the GoToWebinar software. Let us know if you can see our screen and hear us clearly. Thanks very much. Thank you everyone for joining us for today's presentation. We're going to be introducing the Breakthrough Data Protection Appliance. And per, um, introduction to your host, this is going to be led by CEO, CEO and founder of Infrascale, Ken Shaw, and heading our product management department for the appliance, Stefan Simas. Thanks, Carla. All righty. So, um, <clears throat> Folks, today's agenda is uh, we'll do a little bit of an overview on the current state of the platform. Most of the audience today are existing Infrascale partners, so I won't uh, bore you with a super detailed overview, but we'll just sort of recap where, we're, where we've gotten to in, in the progression of building out this platform. We'll then turn to the news of the day, which is the, the new appliance offerings that we're bringing to market. Uh, Stefan will be leading a lot of that conversation. I'll be, uh, I'll be chiming in as well. The, we'll then look at how the appliance stacks up against the competitors in the field of you know, appliance vendors. And really before we even get to that, we'll sort of answer the most obvious question, which is why would a cloud company like Infrascale actually be getting into the appliance business in the first place? You know, uh, from one perspective, it looks like a little bit of a, a, a curveball, but uh, there is a rationale behind it. <laughs> we'll be taking you through that today. Do stay for the end of the webinar. We're going to have a special promotional offer where you can get your hands on the technology we're going to be talking about today. And then, uh, as we like to do from time to time, we are continuing to prop up Amazon.com by giving away a free Kindle. Uh, today, we're giving the Kindle to the person who asks the most questions. So if you haven't already found the question tool in the GoToWebinar software, I'd encourage you to find it now. Uh, you can just type your questions in. And it's a 30-minute presentation followed by Q&A at the end, which will go for pretty much as long as there are questions still on the line. So find that tool, ask us questions. Um, the, it's far more interesting for us when it's an interactive session. I think it's probably more educational for the audience as well. So don't be shy. All right, let's dive in. So uh, a lot of you have probably seen this slide in presentations past. This is the InfraScale overview. Uh, what does Infrascale do? We're a cloud data protection platform company. So the key functionality that we've always focused on has been in and around backup, whether that's server backup or endpoint backup or mobile backup. And over the years, we've built out from there so that we've got solutions that are really great for endpoints like laptops. Uh, and then we had file sharing capabilities, as most of you know, uh, and then more and more advanced disaster recovery capabilities. Founded in 2006, uh, headquarters here in El Segundo, where we're all sitting. Uh, some by-the-numbers sort of statistics 
Today there are 20 billion objects being stored in the InfraScale cloud. We've got more than 1,000 platform partners around the world, but mainly in North America. Uh, 170 of you have signed up for today's webinar, so that's awesome. More than a million PC servers, mobile devices protected and connected to the system, 12 data centers around the world. But uh, the real news, and probably you know, what you're most interested in hearing about, is circled in red down the bottom right-hand corner of this slide. We recently had some pretty big news as a company. We both completed our Series B financing. Uh, we raised $16.3 million. And we also acquired Eversync, a fantastic little technology company out in Salt Lake City. So today we're going to be talking a lot about what that acquisition means to InfraScale and most importantly what it means to you as our partners, both in terms of the products and technology we're going to be able to bring out to you, you know, very soon in the months ahead, and also what it means to your business and how you can drive more revenue uh, from these products. So, plowing on, we, we're going to see this slide twice in, in this presentation. I'll talk in, in greater detail to it towards the end, but this is a graphic that you know, potentially you, our partners, should be using a variant of in your own materials. The idea is that it, it captures just the, the complete sort of height and width of the InfraScale data protection platform. So down the left-hand column, we've got all the verbs that you can support with our system, server backup, endpoint backup, data archiving, file sharing, disaster recovery. And then across the bottom, we've got all the different sort of nouns, quote unquote, or devices that we can do that for ranging from smartphones on the very left all the way through to more complicated server environments, be they file servers, email servers, app or database servers. Now as part of Eversync becoming part of InfraScale, we've then really also added some exciting server data protection capabilities around Linux, around Unix, around VMware. I suspect that's probably some of the most interesting and exciting stuff to the, the existing partners on the line. So um, we're going to talk lightly a bit about that today, but I encourage you to ask me a ton of questions along that vector. Um, and as I said, we'll expound more on that when we see this slide again toward the end of the presentation. So just a reminder, um, you know, we've always been committed to cloud. We're a cloud native company. It wasn't called cloud when we started, but we've always built our technology uh, on the cloud, and when we say cloud, we always we sort of have this little phrase in house where we talk about your cloud, our cloud, or any cloud. That means you can use the InfraScale Turnkey service, use our global infrastructure grid, or if you're running a private cloud environment, maybe maybe you're running an OpenStack environment, for example, you can send data to that. Or if you're using a third-party cloud like an Amazon Web Services or a Microsoft Azure, you can send data to that also. And so everything that you see today. Uh, when it comes to the appliances, it still holds true with this metaphor. We're, we're committed to cloud flexibility. We don't believe in one monolithic cloud. We believe in thousands or tens of thousands of interconnected clouds. And so your cloud, our cloud, any cloud continues to apply. As to does that commitment to double blind encryption, in the last 12 months there has been well a, a great light shone on the issue of cloud privacy in particular. Um, Mr. Edward Snowden has, has helped greatly in, in sort of getting the public's attention on this issue. And a lot of companies have taken shortcuts when it comes to cloud security. So for those of you who haven't seen this slide before, this compares and contrasts our ultra-safe technology at the top with the way most cloud vendors uh, handle data. So at the bottom, you've got something that maps to, say, a Dropbox or a Carbonite. So raw data on a device goes through a tunnel which is encrypted, uh, gets to the cloud, and then is encrypted with a key that the vendor knows. So Dropbox knows that key, stores the data. The problem with that is that Dropbox can get access to that data at any time. That could be in response to a subpoena, uh, or far more likely a rogue employee, or God forbid if somebody were to breach Dropbox's systems that have access to anybody's data. Uh, we probably all remember a couple of years ago when for four hours Dropbox dropped all password authentication and any user could log into any other user's account. Well, that's bad today for any company. Uh, but if you're handling encryption properly, it shouldn't actually lead to the exposure of individual data. Let's contrast that with InfraScale's ultra-safe approach at the top. We take the data, we encrypt the data on the source device with a key only known by you. Then we transfer that pre-encrypted data through a tunnel, again, encrypted with SSL. When it gets to the cloud, we encrypt that data again, putting it inside a second security envelope, if you will, before we finally store it. 
So what this means is that only you, the original owner and custodian of that data, can get at it. You need your key and you need our key. And so in the industry, this is now starting to be described as double-blind encryption um, you know, or a zero-knowledge storage system. We've been doing this for years. Uh, and it's now fine. It's now becoming quite popular. A lot of people are talking about it, uh, which is good for you as our partners because this is something that's been built into what into the your offerings. You know, ever since you joined the Uberscale Partner Program, and I think if you talk to your customers, you will you'll get a lot more interest on this particular cloud privacy topic than you have in the past. And then one last reminder that. The dashboard has really become Infrascale's core product. It sits at the center of everything that we that we build. It sits at the center of everything you do with our products. And that will remain true even with this new appliance line of technology that we're bringing in. So dashboard remains your command center from which you can deploy and provision and manage and back up all of your customers' data. So that is our setup for a discussion of the actual uh, Infrascale appliance line that we're announcing today and we'll be iterating on over the, the months and, and years ahead. And I'm going to turn it over now to Stefan to, to talk to us about this. So thank you, Ken. So for a company like Infrascale that for the last 10 years has been so steeped in cloud-based technologies, it really sort of begs the question as to why would a cloud vendor get involved in an appliance? And the reason is if you sort of step back and look at it, uh, a cloud-based approach to backup and recovery has a number of strengths, and the ones that we all know well, the fact that, for example, you don't have to take care of system maintenance because we do. It's simple to deploy. It's easy to manage. You can manage it centrally. However, together with that comes certain, certain disadvantages and certain use case scenarios. So, for example, if you have end user customers that have large amounts of data, that can take a fair amount of time to upload up to a cloud-based uh, storage uh, system. And if you need to recover that data, it can take a little bit longer. It also leaves your network or the end user's network. So if you look at an appliance-based approach to backup and recovery, uh, if you have a large amount of data, both backing up that data and then restoring that data quickly if necessary, um, an appliance can leverage the high bandwidth network that is available on-premise of the customer and be able to do that. Furthermore, you have some enterprises or some organizations that have either rules or laws uh, in their country about where that data can go or not go. Um, some companies may have policies that say the data can't leave the corporate network. Some countries may have rules that the data must stay on sovereign territory. And in those cases, an on-premise approach, whatever that is, um, makes much more sense. Uh, however, if you do go down this path, then there obviously are some, some things you have to do that in a cloud-based approach you don't. Uh, whereas in a cloud-based approach, we take care of maintaining the system. If you have an on-premise appliance, then the end user or you, the partner, have to do that system maintenance um, directly. You need to find a space to mount those appliances, whether it's in the end user rack or, or where not. Uh, and lastly, you know, maintaining the, you know, keeping the system updated when new versions and new patches and all that comes out, you have to do that as well. So when we step back and look at this, uh, you'll see on this graphic on the far left, you know, what we internally will call disk to cloud, where we take you know, data from the end user that is on their disk drives and back it up into our cloud-based infrastructure. This is what we have been doing. And on the far right is what appliance vendors, like historically people like Eversync have done, where they'll take that exact same data and back it up to disk drives on an appliance that sits on the premises of the end user customer. And we think about, well, okay, what if we were to take the best of both and combine them? What if we were to combine both approaches into one seamless solution? What would that look like? And what it would look like is, first of all, you'd have an on-premise appliance that was connected to the end user customer's network and was also connected to the cloud at the same time that appliance would be deployable either as a physical appliance directly on the network or as a virtual appliance directly on that end user network. It would be configurable in a number of different replication schemes. So for example, in a traditional appliance, you could put a single appliance on the customer network and back up the data directly to the appliance. You could deploy the appliance in a pair of physical appliances where that, se where that second appliance serves as a form of redundancy to the first appliance, but in a 
cloud integrated appliance approach that redundant appliance could in fact live in the cloud. So you get the benefits of an on-premise appliance with the benefits of the cloud all in one solution. You could theoretically partition what data gets backed up just to the appliance and what data gets backed up to the appliance and further backed up to the cloud in some form of a hierarchical storage scheme for backup. And if you were to bring these things together, what would you want to do? You'd also want to have a common dashboard. Everything that we've done has always emphasized one common single pane of glass to whatever you do. And if you're going to introduce appliances into this kind of a scheme, you'd want to, you'd want to do the same thing here as well. And then lastly, uh, when we think about cloud-based approach to backup and recovery, we think about metering the usage of that technology, typically on you know, the amount of, of terabytes that we're protecting. And if you were to introduce uh, an appliance into this kind of scheme, you'd really kind of want to think about it the same way. And so really, this is what we've, we've come to here. And so you see the exact same uh, table, if you wish, the comparison table that I showed uh, two slides ago here where we're really sort of capturing most of the benefits of each one uh, of the approaches into a combined approach while leaving behind some of the drawbacks of each particular approach. So for example, in, a, in, in what we call a cloud integrated appliance, you're going to pick up the ease of management and central management that you get out of a cloud-based approach together with the ability to support large volumes of data for backup and quick recovery by having an on-premise component to the solution. At the same time, uh, you know, some of the drawbacks of, of a cloud approach, you know, data upload times, slow recovery times, those kind of go away. Uh, as well as, for example, the, the remote but still present hardware failure risk that you get if you have an appliance-only approach. What happens if you know, that particular appliance goes down or if those pairs of appliances on that site all of a sudden are not available with a cloud-based um, integrated approach, you have that second place that you can go to recover the data. And so I'll let Ken uh, bring out some of his favorite points on this right here on this slide. Yeah, so, you know, like, um, I mean, we've got a ton of questions on the line. We might pa actually pause after this slide and, and rip through some of these questions, so don't, don't think we're ignoring them. Um, the, when I think about, uh, just, just in sum of what Stefan just said, we've been great at building cloud-based data protection products. We know how to build clouds, design clouds, scale clouds, secure clouds. What the Eversync team had, had spent a similar amount of time doing is building really fantastic, powerful, on-premise data protection appliances designed for high-density server environments. So if you've got a rack with 20 servers in it, Eversync is perfect for that. Whereas the traditional InfraScale solutions were more better suited to uh, spread out or fractured data. That's where we really shone the most. So when you, mer when you merge a company that is great at cloud and you merge a company that's great at deduplicating appliances, you get this disk to disk to cloud metaphor. And you're going to hear us talking about disk to disk to cloud as the future of data protection in pretty much every piece of material you see from this company going forward. It's not to say that we won't continue to support direct to cloud. We will. And it's not to say we won't continue to support just to appliances. We will. But we genuinely believe that the best data protection pattern is disk to disk to cloud. You can write massive quantities of data to an on-premise appliance. You can then deduplicate that or dehydrate that down to a very small data payload, which you can then replicate off to the cloud in near real time. So you have the benefits of high-speed recovery over the LAN. So if you go down recovery time and your RTO and RPO, we can now measure it in minutes instead of hours. We all know that recovery straight from the cloud can take some time. So with this to this to cloud, we have the benefits of a really fast recovery time over the over the at land speed, but with the resiliency and and bottomlessness to coin a term of the cloud behind it. And so some other call outs for existing partners on the line. One of the pain points with our solution stack has been that we don't have uh, a good solution for Linux and Unix. Well, that's no longer true. We now have a fantastic solution for Linux and Unix. So where you had customers that had Linux and Unix environments and you've had to put some other solution in there, you can now simply use the InfraScale stack. Similarly, a lot of our customers and a lot of our partners <coughs> are more and more overseeing VMware-based environments where a lot of servers have been virtualized and they're not sitting on metal anymore. They've been moved onto VMware. Well, with this new technology that we're rolling out, we've got host-based VMware backup with all of the deduplication and cloud replication we've been talking about. 
So even if you've got 30 or 40 VMs running on a VMware box, we can now back all of that up. You don't need to worry about licenses for all of those guest OSs. You don't need to muck around with doing something like installing Shadow Protect, for example, inside those guest OSs. You just configure the backup technology to talk to the VMware host, and you're, you're now set up, and that data is protected. So those are some of my favorite things. Uh, we've got a ton of questions. Let's rip through these before we go on to the next slide. In the slides ahead, we're going to be looking at some of the more sort of speeds and feeds of the appliance itself and some specs and some pricing. So uh, if some of the questions are about that, I'm going to, I'll skip over them because we'll cover them. Uh, some questions. <coughs> so going back to the security conversation, is double blind only enabled when the ultra safe option is chosen? Yes, that's right, Carl. Uh, can we set up payment processing for new clients from the dashboard? Uh, there's a variety of billing options there, and if you have a chat to the support guys, they can absolutely walk you through those things. Uh, the uh, Lionel asks, will this eliminate the need for a backup server on site? Lionel, absolutely. Okay, so let's let's be clear. All of your customers who have backup servers on site, those are targets for replacement by the new Interscale appliance, particularly if those quote, backup servers, unquote, have been sort of jerry-rigged or cobbled together as solutions. This is a completely integrated uh, backup appliance combining both the on-prem hardware capability you need along with the cloud replication that you, that you need to make it truly resilient. Peter asks, how does the issue of speed of backup change when going to disk to cloud versus appliance to cloud? Uh, well, tweaking your question a little bit, you know, when you're backing up straight to the appliance, you can get as much as a terabyte an hour of data throughput. No one's getting that in a public cloud, like an internet connection anywhere in the world, right? So the benefit of this to this to cloud as a pattern is that you can back up over your LAN at a terabyte an hour using whatever your LAN connection is these days, mainly a gigabit. Now your data is protected. We can then dehydrate that data and trickle feed it off to the cloud but it means you're protected, right? And it might then take a day, for example, to replicate it all to the cloud, but your backup's no longer running. The backup's finished. The backup window gets shrunk. So your servers are protected, the data is sitting on the on-prem appliance, and then it's replicating to the cloud as fast as it can. Lorenzo asks, are the appliances brand is InfraScale? Can they be customized to our own brand and solution for our clients? Lorenzo, the, the appliances do have a small InfraScale decal on them. Paul, writes, uh, going to a long question, how do you see Ipscale adapting to cope with the increasing amounts of data being stored natively in the cloud? Paul, that's a great question. Let's mull on that a little bit and talk more about that at the end. That's more of a discussion. Um, Lionel writes, what's the competition? We're going to be looking at competitive appliances, uh, guys. There's a question here from Jim. Can this spin up VM with VMware? Uh, Jim, yes, it can. Uh, Sunny asks, are the data centers in Canada? Sunny, yes, there are. VMware, does it support the free ESX? If so, which versions? Kyle, great question. Uh, the appliances that we're announcing today do not support the free ESX. They only support the paid editions. However, before the end of the year, we will have uh, an update that then adds support for free ESX. All right. So, Coming back to the present, there's still a lot of questions on the line, which is great. Keep them coming. We will come back to the question feed in a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's bang on and talk a bit about what's in the box, so to speak. What does it cost? Who are the competitors? Oh, actually, I had one more slide. <laughs> so going back to this platform map, if we now consider, so everybody on the line gets the verbs, the things we can do. But if we now think about the types of machines that we can do it for. Historically, InfraScale had been very focused on the Microsoft landscape. Uh, not so much down in endpoints where we've always had OSX support uh, and then Android and iPhone, but in server land, we were very much focused on Windows file servers, Windows database servers, Windows email servers, i.e. SQL and Exchange. We are now supporting VMware, Linux, Unix, uh, and actually a long list of other open uh, source operating systems. So. What's great about this is it means that when you walk into one of your customers, if they have any needs around server backup, endpoint backup, data archiving, file sharing, or DR, and if they have just about any operating system that's been released in the last 25 years, you can be confident that you can support it with the InfraScale platform. 
And so we've, uh, this announcement is a really important one because it brings things like VMware, Linux, and Unix into the InfraScale fold that we didn't have previously. Back to you, Stefan. Okay, so obviously these appliances are going to do all of the, you know, the basic and uh, required functionality, you know, things I'd be able to specify, you know, which files, which folders we're going to back up, to set particular backup schedules for when you want those backup jobs to run, to see which ones have succeeded, which ones need to be repeated, uh, to be able to, to maintain high throughput rates both on backup and restoration of data, to be able to keep a full version history of the data that's being backed up, and then, if required, being able to roll back to a particular version on a particular date that you want to restore. As Ken mentioned, comprehensive support for the major operating systems. Uh, we mentioned, you know, Win, uh, Windows and Linux and Unix and obscure versions of, uh, of Unix, as well as, you know, for those of you who may have customers who have like old versions of NetWare still lying around and running, uh, this all can, can be supported. The dehydration, uh, as Ken mentioned, or the data deduplication algorithm that's built into the appliances um, are a high efficiency algorithm that will uh, dedupe the data anywhere between 2 to 11 times the original data size depending on, on what kind of data it is that we're starting with. This is then further enhanced with the fact that the appliances come with solid state uh, drives on top of the spinning disk that provide for enhanced uh, efficiency in processing the deduplication process. The appliances can be configured in any number of ways. Uh, the most basic approach obviously is to put one appliance on one premise and have it be the backup appliance for the data uh, that the customer has. Um, a next step up would be to install a pair of appliances where one of them is the active appliance to back up the data and the second appliance is a redundant passive appliance. You can also configure two appliances, one at each uh, of two sites that a particular customer might have so that each of those appliances is a primary backup appliance for the servers on that, at that location and serves as a passive uh, recipient of the active data of the other site. You can also combine this in a cloud-based approach where each appliance is a primary backup appliance for the particular site at which the, the servers live and each of those two appliances then backs up into the cloud as its uh, passive appliance. Yeah, and I think, so that's an interesting point for, for the current partners on the line. I think the simplest um, deployment pattern here is one appliance per customer that needs this sort of thing with the cloud replication enabled, because that's super simple. Um, for those of you on the line who have your own data centers, you might also then be interested in doing the, uh, what Stefan was describing, the active-passive pairs, and then that way you can host the second site in your own facility. So that's applicable for some of you, but I think for most of you, it's going to be about putting these appliances on your customer's sites and having that replicate straight to the cloud. Yep. And these appliances come with um, a removable hard drive bay. So for those end user customers that you have where they may want to archive off um, backed up data onto a removable drive that they then put or store in a physical off-site location, uh, these appliances support that, whether they want to do it because they just want to or because they have regulations in a particular industry that requires them to retain data for a certain period of time or a certain number of years. These appliances will, will allow you to do that. If we sort of like pop under the hood and see what's inside, uh, there's a, actually a range of appliances that start from the low end of two terabytes of raw storage data um, on the appliance all the way up to 176 terabytes of raw storage on the appliance. When you factor in the deduplication uh, ratio that can be achievable, you actually get multiples of that in terms of the amount of data that can actually be protected by any one of these appliances. All of them are based on Intel multi-core CPUs with a range of RAM, you know, 12 to 96 gigabytes, uh, a bear, uh, you know, small to a larger number of hard drives, and ultimately at the bottom what you see is that the price range goes starting at the low end, $11,000 and change all the way up to, at the very high end, nearly $150,000, pricing to you, our partners. And at those prices, if you were buying the appliances outright, this would be a good deal. However, we're a cloud vendor, and we're used to pricing things on a service-based model, on a pay-as-you-go model. And so if we're going to go the distance of introducing cloud-integrated data protection appliances, then why wouldn't we also go the distance on the pricing model as well? And so, in fact, you can buy these appliances outright, as we show here, or what you could also do is sign up for a service 
the same way you know how to do today for the InfraScale platform and really pay for what you use. So if you have X amount of terabytes of customer data that you want to protect, then you can sign up to uh, protect that amount of data with us and we take care of figuring out which appliance, how many appliances, how they should be configured and providing those to you as part of that service. And as the number of terabytes that you want to protect go up or down, you can vary your contract with us up or down as you need, and we take care of providing you the right amount of hardware uh, to accomplish that. Now this is different than leasing hardware or alternatives on the market which we'll call it a service, but really it's a lease, where you're basically paying per month for a particular unit of, of an appliance. And then if you got it wrong or the data usage grew and now you need more storage, well, you're in that lease for that appliance, and now you need to get a new appliance with a new lease, or you need to trade one in and get another. That's not service-based pricing, that's leasing. Okay, what this says, this is true hardware as a service pricing. You pay per terabyte, we take care of the hardware. You never have to worry about whether you got the right appliance in the first place or not. We take care of that for you. And on that point, we take care of that for you. This is pricing and a service to you, our channel partners. This is not available to the public. The public can't call us and say, you know, what's your service-based pricing for 10 terabytes? They have to call one of you guys, and you deal with us on that. So if we boil it down to the numbers and look at some of the alternative appliances that are available on the market, uh, none of which do true service-based pricing. However, if we were to try and compare apples to apples and say, okay, if a customer of mine wanted to protect 10 terabytes of data and that customer went shopping at different partners, at a partner level based pricing point of view, what's the difference? And what you can see that at the bottom line, uh, basically you're saving your end user two to four times the price of the alternatives. So not only is it a great technology, not only is it a technology that's integrated into a cloud-based approach, not only is it available in a pricing scheme that is sort of a service-based pricing scheme, it's also a great deal. The other thing about a service-based pricing approach, besides being a great deal, is that you may have end-user customers who don't have a big fat capital expenditure budget lying around to be able to spend $150,000, for example, on a large high-end appliance. But they might have an operating expenditure budget that they can tap into, X amount of dollars per month that they can expense. This provides you a new way of presenting a solution in a way that maybe some customers that before could not buy, now can buy. And so this raises the question of who is the ideal end user for this kind of a solution. And any one of these bullets would highlight an end user as a potentially good ultimate customer for this kind of a technology. So for example, if they have you know, Linux or Unix or NetWare or VMware in their environment, aha, this could become a good customer. If they have a lot of data, you know, 10 terabytes of data on their network, and especially if they need to recover that data quickly, if anything were to happen, that leads towards an on-premise approach or an on-premise with cloud approach as being a good way to go. If they have any rules around, you know, the data needs to stay on my network, um, or if uh, they have a, you know, a country with those kinds of requirements, this is interesting. Another interesting flag is if they're currently using tape backup, and all the headaches that come with that, then this is a very easy conversation to open up. And then lastly, and this is true of any backup and recovery offering, and especially true in this case, if you have end users that are you know, in areas that are known to have natural disasters, you know, maybe they're in, in Tornado Alley in the center of uh, the US, or maybe they're in the, the path of typical hurricanes in the southeast, then these people are already sensitized to the need for these kinds of solutions, and therefore good prospective end users for this. Um, this might be government agencies, might be educational institutions, might be financial services firms. Uh, all these kinds of companies uh, might make you know, good end users for this. So if you'd like to learn more uh, about how we can grow your data protection business together, especially with this new offering, fill in the form that you see at the link below. Give us your information, your contact info. Let's connect, let's chat um, about how this, uh, this can work. And while we're doing that, uh, we're going to offer to each of you that, that connects through this form uh, a free one terabyte virtual appliance that we will work with you to install on your network so that you can get to know this technology while we have a conversation around what's the best way to market it in order to grow your business with uh, the data protection appliances that we now offer. And so with that, I'll turn it back over to Ken for any new questions that may have come up, and we'll go as long as we want to go. Terrific. <coughs>
thanks, Stefan. All right, so going back to the question feed where we've got quite a few questions. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go back up a little bit. Uh, so if you've just asked some questions, we'll get to you, get to you quickly. Um, are the appliance brand as Infoscale? We covered that. There's a small decal on it. Uh, Jim asks, does this use WAN acceleration? Jim, it does. So uh, both the on-premise block level deduplication we're doing, uh, well, it's not WAN acceleration using like a dedicated WAN acceleration device. Uh, so it's probably more WAN optimization if we're going to be you know, quite syntactically correct about it. But the block side over the wire, block level over the wire deduplication that we're doing, as well as the compression um, and all of the other things that have traditionally applied to WAN optimization of the Infoscale stack apply. Uh, we've got another question here from Lorenzo. How do we support the appliance? Uh, what is the operating system running in them? Uh, can we run, use a remote connection tool to connect to the server uh, and connect and service the servers OS? Okay, so inside the appliance is Linux uh, with all of our code running on it. And yes, you can actually have a remote tunnel into the appliance. But more importantly, you'll just be able to go into the Infrascale dashboard, see the appliances, click through to them, and manage them from there. Uh, next question, VMware backup is listed. Is this true host-level backup, or is it an agent-based approach like Shadow Protect? The, uh, so it's a host-level solution that backs up at the VMware level. Uh, when you play with the virtual appliance, uh, you get to see this, and hopefully we'll produce some videos soon, Stefan and Carla, to show how easy it is to do this. But you literally go in, connect it to the VMware host, shows you all the VMs on it, you sort of click the ones you want, you set back up now, and it starts working. It's amazingly simple. Uh, and so if you've got a VMware server, uh, whether that's a standalone server or maybe something connected through like a vCenter, you can back up 10, 20, 30, 40 VMs with just a few clicks. It, it really is very elegant. Uh, we've got another question here. Um, what's the competition? Are there other hybrid systems like this out there? They're, Lyle, that's a great question. There are not any good hybrid systems out there. There are some other vendors who are talking like this, but they're sort of a, they're hardware guys who are giving lip service to the cloud. EMC is the classic case. You know, they'll, they'll tell you they've got cloud capabilities, but it's, it's kind of rubbish. So what's interesting with us is we grew up in the cloud. We're cloud native, and now we're adding the appliance line. That's actually far easier to do than if you grow up as an appliance company, then you try and back the cloud into it. Um, so the, the, the major competitor out there on the market would be Unitrends, and we put that up on the screen. Not only is the Infrascale appliance you know, on par or better than the Unitrends appliance in many ways, but it's 70% cheaper, which either translates into cost savings for your end customers or profit margin for you. Okay, where are we at? Uh, what's the target market segment for this appliance? The mid-market, um, as, as vague as that answer is. But if we look at some of these things that Stefan put on here before, you know, one, one of the first things you've got to ask yourself is, well, the customer's got to be willing to pay $400 a month, right? So this is not for a two-man business. It's, it's for more of a small business or mid-market customer. And then if you look at these defining characteristics, when we were doing a draft of this slide, I sort of said we really need like a big red or after each of these because if, if you've got any one of these characteristics, they're a target. Right? So if it's a heterogeneous environment with Windows and Linux and Unix or VMware, or they have more than 10 terabytes, or they're quite strict about their RTOs. So we're generally talking about um, small businesses. This, this is actually one of my favorite ones, if they have more than five servers in a location. So here at you know, headquarters for Infrascale, we've got 40 people in this office. We've got a little server room, and there's probably 10 servers in there. We would be a prime target. You know, um, the, and so would our other offices around the world, for example. Um, but all the way up to companies with you know, a couple hundred servers sitting in data centers, they're going to need a few more appliances rather than a single one. But hopefully that answers the question about who's the target customer. Uh, question from Anthony, does this remove Shadow Protect as a product? No, Anthony, it doesn't. Shadow Protect is still happily ensconced over in the cloud only part of our, our solution. Um, and so you can absolutely still use Shadow Protect. In fact, you could use it in combination with this. Uh, data centers in Canada, yes, we mentioned that in uh, Toronto. Uh, back of a free VMware, we covered that. Um, can I, as an MSP, brand the portal and the appliance? 
Sonny, yes to the portal, no to the appliance. We have a, uh, there's a small decal on the appliance. Uh, does the appliance support Hyper-V? It will by Christmas. In the version we're announcing today, it doesn't. Okay, Carl is giving me instructions. Where should I go? Oh, sorry. There you go. Um, all right. Is the amount of data band, if Jim's asking, is the amount of data bandwidth over WAN control so everything isn't slow? Yeah, Jim, you've actually got really granular controls over how fast it should replicate. It's really cool. Um, and so you can really fine tune that as you see fit. Andre asks, can the appliance be managed via the dashboard and monitored? Andre, um, if you were to install it right at this moment, the answer would be no. But if but within four weeks, it will be. So we are furiously working to plummet into the dashboard as we speak. And we are absolutely committed to the vision that everything will be through dashboard, that all of the controls will be through dashboard, and the dashboard will remain your central hub to run your data protection business with us. Okay. What objections would an IT professional have regarding this hybrid solution, even though it seems like a no-brainer to me? Oh, that's a good question, Lionel. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, <laughs> he's a no-brainer because, as I think Stefan's chart showed earlier, it really does a good job of combining the benefits of both approaches and minimizing the problems. Um, but uh, I'd love to hear from you as you take this to market and, uh, and give us feedback on that. Carl writes, can we make our own appliances like we did with a staging computer? Carl, you can. You'd use the, uh, the virtual appliance to do that, and then you could put it on whatever hardware you like. Brian writes, can you replicate your other appliances in different physical locations? Yes, Brian, absolutely. So um, everything's about appliance pairs, right? So you can have an active-active setup, you can have an active-passive setup, or you can just go straight to the cloud. So the cloud is sort of the um, super simple out-of-the-box uh, replication target, but you can set up more complicated replication scenarios if you want. Okay, where are we up to? Any Hyper-V integration? Uh, we will have Hyper-V by Christmas. What about Oracle? We support Oracle today, Brian. Jim Reader asked us, do cloning of VMs with VMware? I don't know what that means, Jim, um, so I will have to get back, we'll get back to you on that question, or maybe you can clarify. Um, Lionel asks, will this presentation slides be available for us to access for our clients? Carla, what is going to happen with the slides and the video? So within uh, the next hour or two, you're going to have an email in your inbox. You're going to have a copy of these slides and the presentation video as well. Um, the second slide, if you remember, had Ken and Stefan's contact information. So if you have additional questions that you do need to direct right to them, you have that info as well. Great. Is Windows 2000 and SQL supported? Yes. Uh, does your backup support SQL Server? Yes. Uh, are virtual appliances available for VMware? Yes. Dehub is awesome, and I'm paying for what you use. So that means we're paying for usage on your gear. Um, I don't really understand that question. If you can rephrase, that would be awesome. Are these appliances going to be available globally? That's a great question, Paul, and the answer is absolutely yes. Does this pricing include the off-site storage space as well? Yes, it does. Can this back of SIF shares? Yes, it can. So the Protects One TV includes the appliance storage and the cloud. Yes, it does. Anthony also asks, how long is this pricing to be partner only? Infoscale has been known to always introduce that special pricing, then some months down the road. Now it's available to the public, thereby making it difficult for us partners to be competitive with pricing. This is actually um, completely wrong, Anthony, and it's our fault because we don't do a good job of explaining it. SOS is our consumer branded product and it does about a tenth of the things that InfraScale's products do. And SOS is available to the public and always has been. InfraScale's products are not. InfraScale's products only go out through the channel. So everything that you saw today is only available through the channel and if enterprise companies come in and want to talk to us, we will be attaching one of our channel partners to those conversations. It doesn't mean that we won't talk to an end customer, but it always means a partner's attached, for example. In June, one of our customers, uh, one of our partners rather, worked with us and he, he did a $400,000 sale using this appliance technology and a bunch of other InfraScale technology. And that was booked on his paper. We absolutely helped him. But 
the reason I'm saying this is I, I really, really want to get this message out to our partners on the line. We work with you. We want to sell with you. There's nothing wrong with involving us in, your, in the sale. We're not going to take the sale away from you. 85 to 90% of our revenue comes from you, our channel partners. So don't be afraid to bring deals to us. We'll give you sales engineering resources and account managers. We'll fly someone out in the field to help you meet with customers and help you win the business together. But what you see here today is channel only, and we will not be selling it to the public. And that is true of the InfraScale products most famously in Scale Backup and Recovery. So with that off my chest, <laughs> next question. Dave asks, is there an image-based backup? Dave, so you can do that mode or you can just do file folder. Both are supported. Sunny asks, can one have, say, a one terabyte appliance at various customers and aggregate it all back to my data center to the 10 terabyte appliance? So you can achieve something similar to what you're describing, not in exactly the way you're describing it, but yes. So what you should do is call in and talk to one of our sales engineers about that pattern, either Aaron Jordan or Steve Sussman, and they can walk you through how to achieve what you're describing there. Do we pay, uh, Michael asks, do we pay for the cloud storage in addition to this monthly cost? Stefan, you want to take that one? Yeah, that's actually included in the pricing uh, that we've shown you here. Uh, when you pay for that uh, subscription, you get the storage both on the appliance and in the cloud. Okay. Um, all right, I've just lost my place. Bear with me for a second, folks. Here we go. Okay, Jimmy asks, does the pricing include appliance and the amount of backup space? I think we just covered that. Yep. yep. Um, Petter asks, what is the OS on the appliance? It's running Linux under the hood, Petter. Sean asks, does the appliance have any ILO DRAC management type capabilities? It does, Sean. Great question. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, it does have an ILO port built in. Jay writes, can they be monitored by an RMM and a PSA? Absolutely, Jay. Petter also asks, apart from the encryption of the data, is there any other security on the appliance? Like what, Petter? Uh, maybe if you give me some examples, I'll be able to give you a more intelligent answer. Tony writes, does the appliance need to be in the same location as the data being backed up? Not, not technically, Tony. It needs to be on the same LAN, though. Um, if you had a lot of spread out data, the straight to cloud InfraScale modules are probably better suited for you. Um, so more more than on the land. How, oh, great question. Jimmy asks, how is this different from Datto? Okay, so if Datto grew up and had real enterprise capabilities, it might look something like the InfraScale appliance. Uh, the Datto appliance is incredibly light. It's basically just some low-end hardware with Shadow Protect on top of it. Uh, so the uh, if you're already working with data, we would love to have a conversation with you because not only is the InfraScale appliance priced similarly to the data appliance, it is just far, far more capable. It's like comparing a Pinto to a Ferrari. Petter also asks, if a client of ours has the appliance and cancels the service, do we manage the reallocation of the appliance to a new client? Petter, you could do that. Is it easy to wipe clean? Yes, it is. Uh, Derek asks, uh, this is a new purchase. How many customers' data is currently protected with this? Uh, there are about 1,000 enterprise data centers running Eversync appliances today and roughly 10,000 servers backing up to those Eversync appliances. So this is, I mean, that's actually a really important point. This is a really well-tried uh, solution. It's installed in government, education, financial institutions all across the country. All right, lots of questions on the line. This is great, guys. Okay. Jimmy asks, in the event of a failure, oh, uh, can server be accessed in the cloud via remote desktop? Uh, Jimmy, not quite yet. We call that cloud boot, but what you can do is you can download the, the VMDK and you could mount it somewhere else. Uh, Brian writes, will the free appliance be upgraded to support free VMware? Brian, yes, it will. Lionel asks, does InfraScale have any contracts with state governments in the US? Uh, almost certainly, Lionel. Um, so many municipalities and cities and police stations and those sorts of things. Yeah, talk to your account manager if you're looking for some references. Sonny asks, can the initial data seed by ship from the client site to the data center? Yes, it can. Tony asks, can you have multiple customers on one appliance or is it one appliance per customer? Tony, you can have multiple customers on one appliance. Um, again, you probably want to talk to a sales engineer and just walk them through the, the pattern that you're contemplating and, and validate it with them. Uh, again, Aaron Jordan or Steve Sussman are great for that. Brian asks, when will this be available for purchase? 1 p.m. Pacific this afternoon. 
<laughs> it's available for purchase right now, right? Does this support bare metal backups? Yes. Technical support for the appliance, US-based uh, warranty. Well, everything's built into the service uh, charge, John, so the warranty is just included. Doug asks, with the HAS model, is the hardware fully covered? Yes, Doug, it is. It, so it's, the, it's like what Star Farm said. It's like a lease plus a warranty plus service uh, plus a replacement guarantee. So for those of you who've gone through the hassle of buying equipment on, on lease financing, this is a dream. You don't need to worry about going and get another credit line. You can just click a button in your dashboard with Infrascale and get a new appliance. Uh, Lauren, uh, it's global, uh, globally available, where does the data replicate to? Uh, you'll recall we have 12 data centers around the world, so you've got your choice of replication targets. Andre says, for international partners, what happens if the appliance fails and the parts, e.g. hard drive, need to be replaced? Will the partner have to keep stock parts for their customers, or will Infoscale be a FedEx overnight? Also, who pays the bill for parts replacement? Andre, we pay the bill for parts replacement, and generally speaking, we'd be taking care of shipping. However, depending on where you are, you might actually want to keep a stock of parts on site. So most of the time, it's not a problem. But we recently did a big deal in uh, Trinidad. Turns out it takes quite a while to get equipment from the mainland of the United States to Trinidad. So most of the time, we, you know, we're definitely paying for it. Um, but in some certain locations in the world, you might want to keep some, some inventory. Ross says, great product. Thanks, guys. Ross, our pleasure. Um, OK, we're coming to the end. Anthony writes, most excellent. Thanks for your answers, Ken. Seems like you guys have come up with a great solution. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks for asking a lot of questions. Dave writes, can a failed server be virtualized on the appliance? Oh, Dave. Breaks my heart to tell you that not today, but it, again, this will be available soon. So no, you can't bring back a, a dead machine running as a hypervisor on the appliance itself. Later in the year, we'll be uh, launching a fully automated cloud boot solution, which will allow you to bring a server back running in the cloud itself. Uh, and then we're doing R&D to figure out, can we bring a running machine back on the box itself? Sunny asks a great question. If the customer app grows one terabyte appliance, do we need to upgrade to another bigger appliance, or can we just add space to the appliance? Either or both. Correct, either or both. So we can absolutely upsize the existing appliance in situ, or we can ship you an additional shell that becomes an expansion array, or we could ship you a, a second appliance. Part two, how much of this, uh, can this appliance grow? Uh, part of this depends on what is the hardware we initially ship you. Um, obviously, what we, what we will tend to do is, is to ship uh, an appliance with a chassis that has growing room in it for whatever you say is the amount of data you want to protect, because we're fully anticipating that whatever you tell us is going to grow over time. And so it's in a, both of our interests that we could just ship you additional drives that are required rather than having to ship you a new chassis. Right. And so within a single appliance, it goes up to, I think, 176 terabytes. Uh, Lionel asks, are there any limits to this solution? Well, Lionel, um, it won't wash your car. But when it comes to your data protection needs, it's fairly robust. Uh, I'm sure there are limits to the solution. Um, but we've, you know, we did a lot of work when we got to, so we first got to know the Eversync guys as we we're going to form a partnership. And in, in, in the end, we were really fortunate on both sides that we could actually just bring them into Infrascale as a company. And we're all thrilled that that has happened. Uh, the reason we were going to select Eversync as a technology partner back when we were was that they really just had this monster technology stack that not that many people knew about that. And we know what that's like here at Infrascale because we used to be in that position. Um, and so there, it really is just an incredibly broad solution uh, with great support for all of the major operating systems out there and all of the major data protection patterns that people want to pursue. Sean says, does the appliance phone home? Yes, should any of the disks fail, especially in a hardware as a service model? Sean, it does phone home. Derek's laughing at my joke. <laughs> Derek, our product manager, has recently moved to the East Coast and is, is joining us remotely, for those of you who are used to hearing Derek. And it appears to be lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy writes, what is, the, what is the term needed for the appliance? Under a service model, it's going to be 36 months or three years. Got it. But remember, you can buy this not with the service model if, if you don't want to sign a three-year contract. More importantly, you should be passing that through. Your customer should be signing a three-year contract with you, so you should be thrilled about that. OK. Um, Nate Natana, so the $400 a month gets you one terabyte virtual appliance. How does the pricing work? 
for extra terabytes. Sixty-nine dollars per TB per month uh, thereafter. So multiply the number of TBs you want, you need, times sixty-nine per month. And, and I want to be clear: the one terabyte virtual appliance is free. It's for all you good folk who showed up to today's webinar. That's the first point. Second point is four hundred dollars a month gets you a physical appliance with a, a, a street price of fifteen thousand dollars if you were going to go out there and buy cash. Okay. And then thirdly, what Stefan said, 69 bucks per terabyte extra. So you'll note that these terabytes are actually priced lower than traditional infrascale terabytes, which are at 129. Okay, um, where are we up to? Anthony writes, if we wanted to shift our entire existing infrascale partnership over to this type of solution, can we roll our existing paid up contract into this solution? Anthony, yes, you can. You're going to need to talk to your, uh, your channel account manager about that. Um, but the yeah, if you wanted to roll all your customers over to this sort of a solution, uh, you know, we'd have no problem with that. Uh, Lionel writes, "Am I correct? If we want to, we can create our own data center." Absolutely, Lionel. Brian says, "Well done, Ken. Found a great solution that we didn't know we needed." Brian, I'm lucky to have a lot of people around me who are way smarter than me. So, uh, thanks in particular to the, the guys out at Eversync who built a phenomenal product here, and I'm hoping some of those are on the line today. Jimmy writes, if I currently am doing just cloud backup, will it be hard to upgrade to the appliance? No, Jimmy, but there's no need to rip and replace. If you're doing cloud backup for customer A, maybe you put an appliance in for customer B, but there's no need to go into customer A and rip out what you've already got. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, I don't think we're running out of questions. So John writes, is the pricing different if they are on-premise only? Yeah, there's a slight, uh, there's a slight, uh, slightly lower price, which is not in this slide deck. But if you talk to uh, um, your uh, your account manager, he can show you the, the different pricing options. But yes, there's a slightly lower option if it's just on-premise, both on the on the, uh, especially on the service model. Jimmy Rice, do you have a sample three-year contract? Jimmy, you should talk to one of your channel account managers about that. But yes, we can do that for you. Brian Rice, sixty-nine per month per terabyte. Is that per device also? The initial uh, 399 is per device since it's sort of like a, a setup if you wish to actually you know send out the initial appliance. When you buy additional terabytes at 69 per month, we don't really care what appliance you put them to. Oh, this is a great question from Gene. Is there a sizing tool for needed storage? Two ways to answer this question. The first one is yes, there is, and the second one is you don't need it because that's our problem, right? The benefit of has, and this is why this is quite disruptive. We have to worry about sizing, not you. So if it, you know, if we get the wrong appliance in the field, we're going to replace it. So the whole sizing conversation around appliances is because these things cost fifteen thousand dollars up to a hundred thousand dollars. So you want to make darn sure that you pick the right one. Well, in a has model, you don't need to worry about that. We'll ship out, you know, we'll ship out the infrascale twenty seven hundred, and if you outgrow that, then we'll ship you the, you know, the next model up. So sizing has always been a critical component of the procurement cycle for integrated you know, appliances. It doesn't need to be anymore. right? We're bundling together the equipment, the software, the leasing terms, as well as the support into one attractive has pricing model for you. And we take on the risk of sizing it correctly and so on. But if you really want a sizing tool, <laughs> talk to one of the sales engineers and, and they can help you with that. Don Clark, do we have any marketing info available? Don, absolutely. If you go to uh, our website and click through to products, and go to the appliances section, you get a lot of information. Also, I think it's infrascaleappliances.com. Uh, everything. Um, we'll get back to you on that. We'll get back to you on that, but do go to our website, go to the products menu and click on appliances. All right. Um, there are, uh, Lionel writes, how much storage can one appliance hold? Uh, It'll go up to 176 terabytes of raw storage data on uh, the appliance itself. And then depending on the kind of data that you're protecting, that could go up to, to 10 times that amount of data. Uh, again, depending on what kind of data it is. And then Anthony writes, uh, all of these appliances rack mount, uh, and even towel-based solutions for clients who don't have rack. They're all rack mount, Anthony. Um, now, here's a nice, juicy uh, question. Um, Dave Vernon, I'd love to discuss how this beats Datto's features. It seems to me that you guys are missing some key features. Dave, I'll take you up on that challenge. I probably haven't done a good job today of answering, uh, in particular, why it's a better solution than Datto. You've got my email address. It's at the front of this uh, deck. And for any of the rest of you, it's ken at infrascale.com. 
email me and Stefan, myself, Derek Wood will all reply back and, sh and get you some material. We actually have a 200 row feature comparison for all the major appliances and I assure you that uh, this is a better solution uh, than Datto. Like anything, if you've got a particular corner case, maybe Datto beats us in that particular corner case. But uh, for example, the Datto solution is just rubbish when it comes to Linux and Unix, right? So just right there, the Datto solution has very, very, very poor VMware support, as an example. I can go on and on and on. So uh, send me an email and we'll, we'll have that debate. I want to win you over to this. I want to win you as a customer. Um, so please get in touch. And that goes for anybody else who, who thinks I, we, we fluffed on any of the questions. And on that note, some others of you might have that same question. So in the follow-up email with this slide deck, I'll go ahead and include some additional information from you, for you and a competitive comparison, that one that Ken just mentioned. And so we're, we're getting to the top of the hour, folks, so we're going to have to start wrapping up. So if you've got any last questions, please, please pound them out now and we'll answer them. Uh, we're going to have to wrap up here in a few minutes. Uh, okay, so Paul writes, I've just signed up as, uh, as a partner in the UK. My clients are all small and will be cloud only. Can you confirm that you're not going to reduce your commitment to the traditional cloud backup? Paul, absolutely not. There's, I mean, you know, we built this company on cloud. Just because we're rolling out an appliance line doesn't change that. Um, so dashboard will continue to be the heart of our solution and all of our technologies will continue to support straight to cloud as a, as a pattern. Um, you, you know, you can look at this as us plugging a hole. We were cloud only. And so the companies, and, and we had sort of some prescribed best practices that allowed you to do distance to, to cloud, but we couldn't give you that whole stack. And we certainly didn't have appliance only. So now we have appliance only, if you want to do that. And we, we have two ways of doing distance to, to cloud. The old way, which was InfraScale Core Tech with sort of our recommendations for how to set up this to this to cloud. Or if you want to make it simple, you just buy the whole solution from us, right? And we've made it simple at the technology level and at the commercial level. But um, yeah, the, you, you do not need to worry. Our commitment to cloud uh, is only getting stronger. Okay, where are we up to? Brian writes, is the backup reporting of failures more detailed than the current uh, cloud backup? It is actually, Brian. The reporting granularity is very granular. Anthony writes, can you tell me the speed of the hard disks in the appliance? Um, I can't off the top of my head, but that's a great follow-up question. So if you email me, we'll get you an answer to that. Does it support Oracle Database? Yes, it does, George. Uh, Lionel, you guys are evil geniuses. I love it. I believe you just overcame the majority of objections I have faced. Thank you. Lionel, that's made my day. <laughs> Andre, we have customers in Trinidad asking for a local uh, data backup service, data stored locally. Can we use one of the, or more of these appliances to achieve this and back up those appliances to InfraScale? Absolutely, Andre. We also have customers in Trinidad, so we should probably join forces down there and, and help each other out. Um, you know, but yeah, so you can definitely do what you said. And then Jimmy writes, looking forward to upgrading to the appliance. Well, we don't have any other questions on the line, guys, so that's been a really interactive webinar. Thank you for all the questions. Um, Carla will do the tally and figure out which one of you has won the Kindle. Uh, and so, um, but, but do go and check out uh, the content on the website, ipsco.com, go to the products menu, click on appliances. And if you'd like to get your hands on the free appliance, go to infrascale.com slash appliance, fill in the form, reach out to your channel account managers, talk to them, reach out to the sales engineers, talk to them, reach out to me or Stefan directly if you'd like to. Uh, we're super excited about this new technology, as you can tell. So we really want to talk to you about it and get it in your hands, and most importantly, get it in your customers' hands uh, and get you earning new revenue on this technology. Any final words, Stefan? No, I think that pretty much sums it up. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, everybody, for your attention today, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.